What's up guys, today we're going to be going over how to fine tune GPT-J6B, which is the newest and largest publicly available GPT model. In a previous video, I went over how to fine tune the GPT-Neo 2.7 billion parameter model. And as I went over in that video, we know that larger NLP models are better suited for fine tuning tasks. So it makes perfect sense why if we have the capability, we would fine tune this model versus the 2.7 billion model. Though it is perfectly possible that we do not have the hardware to fine tune the model. My system has 128 gigabytes of RAM and an RTX 3090 along with a Ryzen 3600. Well, 128 gigabytes is the highest amount of RAM you can have on consumer grade hardware. After 128 gigabytes, you need to bump up to a processor like Threadripper or epic on the amd line even with my high-end pc i am barely able to fine-tune gptj6b i would not recommend trying to fine-tune the model without at least 128 gigabytes of ram and a gpu roughly the equivalent to an rtx 3090. even with those specs you will still need to have a sizable amount of swap here on the screen right now is the repo that we'll be using to fine-tune gptj6b this repo contains three main parts. First, we have the quotes dataset folder, which contains the dataset properly formatted for fine tuning. I went over this dataset and how to make it in a previous video. The next folder is GPT Neo 6B. At the time of recording, GPT J 6B is not included into the Hugging Face API, but we can go ahead and still use it using some conversion scripts that I go over in a previous video. Those programs will allow us to convert the model weights into a PyTorch format and it will allow us to use those weights with the Hugging Face API. Lastly, we have the fine tuning repo folder, which contains code originally from another repo. This repo being called fine tune GPT 2 XL by this user here. This repo originally allowed you to fine tune GPT Neo 2.7 billion as well as GPT 2 XL, uh, but I went ahead and modified it to allow us to fine tune GPT J 6B as well. Next in this repo, we have a brief walkthrough. We'll go over these steps in the rest of the video, but basically, there are five steps. First, we need to create a content environment and enter that environment. Then we need to run the install requirements script to get our environment set up. We'll then need to download the model and get the model in a usable format using the scripts inside the GPT Neo 6B folder. At some point in the future, when GPT J 6B is officially added to Hugging Face, this step will not be needed. We'll then want to copy over the files train CSV and validation CSV from the quotes dataset folder and put those into the fine tuning repo folder. Of course, if you have your own custom data set, you will copy instead your files into the fine tuning repo folder. And the last step will be to run the fine tuning code with the appropriate flags in order to begin fine tuning the model. Let's go ahead now and walk through these steps. I've already gone ahead and cloned this git repo and entered the folder. Let's go ahead and create a conda environment. I'll do conda create n we'll call it gptj6b i'll do python equals 3.7 yes and that's done let's go ahead now and enter that content environment so to conda activate gptj6b let's now go ahead and run that script that we mentioned called install requirements this may take several minutes so i will add a time function to it so we can see how long it took uh, to run in total and I'll come back when it's done. While our needed packages are being installed, let's look and see exactly what we're installing. Lines 3 and 4 are packages required for fine tuning and just proper usage in general. Lines 6 through 8 are needed for downloading and converting the model into a PyTorch friendly format. Line 10 is very important. What this line does, it installs a very specific version of transformers. If you do not install the correct version of transformers, the output of your model won't make any sense. And by extension, you will not be able to properly fine tune your model. So if you're getting weird outputs, make sure that you have the correct version of transformers installed. But if you run this script, you shouldn't have any issues. Lines 12 through 14 clone deep speed from source. 
and we build it from source. The reason why we do this is to make sure that we have all the needed operations. That's what DS build ops equals one does. Deep speed, of course, is the package used to drastically reduce the requirements for fine tuning these larger models. Without deep speed, it would not be even remotely possible to fine tune GPT-J 6B on hardware like I have. And lastly, we have DS report. What this does is it prints out the installed operations for deep speed. And this will just show us that we have properly installed deep speed and that we are done installing the requirements. Going back to our terminal, we can see that the install script has finished. It took eight minutes and three seconds to run. And we can see the output of DS report and we see that we have all the operations installed for deep speed. So now at this time, until GPTJ is officially added to Hugging Face, the next step is to download and convert the GPTJ 6B model into a format that is compatible with PyTorch and Hugging Face. This process is very similar to the first video I made on GPTJ 6B. Let's go ahead and do that by navigating to the GPT Neo 6B folder. Inside this folder, we'll see three files to start. Get model part one, part two, and then convert model to torch. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is run part one. What this will do is that it will download and extract the GPTJ 6B weights. This could take several minutes as the weights are very large and the total amount of time will vary due to your internet speed. I have pretty good internet speed, but it'll still take several minutes. Here we can see the code for part one. It's pretty simple. It just downloads the weights and then extracts it. One thing to note is that if you get an error, uh, installing uh, ZSTD may help. Using sudo apt install ZSTD on Ubuntu is how you do that. So now downloading and extracting the GBTJ 6B weights is done. It took roughly four minutes and 53 seconds to download the weights and roughly 20 seconds to extract those weights. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is run part two. What this does is it makes a folder called gptj6b and also downloads a config file for the model. This folder will be the home of the config file as well as the converted model weights. Together, it will allow us to load gptj6b into the Hugging Face API. We can see this if we go into the folder we can see the config file. Lastly, what we're gonna to wanna to do is convert the model weights into a PyTorch friendly format. To do this, we're going to run convert model to torch.py. We're also gonna add a time function in front of it so we can see how long it takes to run. It can take at least several minutes to convert the weights into a PyTorch friendly format. We have now finished converting the weights into a PyTorch friendly format. It took roughly five minutes and 13 seconds to do so. If we go ahead and enter that folder we made earlier and look, we can see now we have a PyTorch model.bin and a config.json. Together, this will allow us to load and ultimately fine tune GBTJ 6B. At this point, we have the first three steps done of the walkthrough. The next two steps are to copy the train.csv and validation.csv into the fine tuning repo. This of course will be from the quotes data set I've gone over in a previous video, but if you want to use your own custom data, now is the time to copy it over. I'll go ahead and copy those files now. To do this, I will copy all CSV files by doing star.csv and moving it over to the fine tuning repo. We can now see that I have both the train and validation.csv files inside the folder. Additionally, we're gonna to want to move the GBTJ 6B folder over to the fine tuning repo. To do this, we'll do move and we'll move it to the fine tuning repo. This is what we'll be loading later on. At this point, we could fine tune the model, but I want to very briefly go over what has changed in the code from that repo I showed earlier. So the main file with most of the changes is the run CLM file. There are only two main areas of changes. If we say that the model we're using is called gptj 6 b we'll trigger this if statement and load the model from 
a pre-trained model. Additionally, and more importantly, if we're using GPT-J6B, we are not going to resize the token embeddings. If we do go ahead and resize the token embeddings, this will cause issues later on loading a fine-tuned model and using it. The output of GPT-J6B for some reason is 50,400 rather than 50,257. It doesn't seem to affect the output of the model negatively, but by resizing the token embeddings, this can cause issues with the sizes not matching up. Another change is now we'll be using stage three of the zero optimization rather than stage two. Stage three uses even fewer GPU resources and instead uses more CPU resources. Even for an RTX 3090, this is a must. The config layout is copied from the Hugging Face documentation. It is just a standard stage three config file. Uh, there may be improvements to make here. At this point, we are able to start fine tuning our model. To do so, we're going to need to run deep speed with a variety of flags. I have an example of how to run it with the example run. So we're going to cat that now. I will now briefly go over some flags you're going to want to pay extra attention to. You're going to want to make sure that you're using the GBTJ 6B JSON file I just went over recently. You're going to want to make sure that your model is in a folder called GPTJ6B and that you have the model name or path set to this value here. A parameter you may want to mess around with is the number of epics. Eval steps tells you how many steps will occur before it tests out your model and gives you a loss value for the validation data set. The gradient accumulation steps is the number of steps we take and accumulate the gradients before taking those gradients and using those to adjust the weights. Due to the fact that we likely can only have a batch size of one on the next flag, having this be a higher value such as 32 is a good idea to better adjust the weights in a more generalized way. Save total limit will only save 20 models and then save steps tells you how often it will save. Lastly, and very importantly, is we need to specify that we're going to use the GBT2 tokenizer. It will not work if you do not have this flag. For the purposes of demonstrating how much resources this takes, I'm going to set the eval steps and the save steps to two each and then run this. So I've gone ahead and changed the eval steps and save steps to two and I'll now run this. Take a look at the resource usage, namely the RAM and the swap. and now the RAM usage is drastically increasing. The model is now training. As we can see, it's using 122 gigabytes of RAM. It will continue using this high amount of RAM until it needs to save, at which point it will need even more RAM. Since we do not have that RAM, it will need to use the swap. In order to fine tune and save this model, I had to increase my swap from two gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. You will likely need to do the same thing if you are running this on a similar system. As we can see, the model fine tuning just finished its first step and took 274 seconds. In order to fine tune for the whole 12 epics, we would need to do this another 395 times. Fine tuning this model will take a very long time. We are now running evaluation on the validation data set. Once this is complete, since we set both saving and evaluation to two, we will begin saving the model. We have now begun saving the model. As you can see, the RAM is maxed out and we're using 11 gigabytes of swap and counting. The model has now been saved, which took an additional 300 seconds roughly. Taking a look at the checkpoint, you can see that it is massive. It is 84.9 gigabytes. Before we can use this model though, we need to do one more thing to it. Let's navigate to the folder that we put the checkpoint in, which is fine tune and then checkpoint two. We need to run an included program called 
0 to FP32. What this does is it converts the 0 saved model into a floating point 32 model. If we take a look at the flags, we can see that it needs two arguments. It needs the checkpoint dir and it needs the output file name. Let's go ahead and run that again, but with those arguments. So here we are, we're gonna run the zero to FP32 command. We're gonna give it the current directory that we're in and we're gonna call it pytorchmodel.bin, which is the name that the model needs to be in order for you to load it. We'll see how long it takes. So the conversion from zero to FP32 is finally finished. It took 11 minutes and 32 seconds. But at this point, we could now load the model and use it just like I went over in my first video over GPT-J6B. And at this point, this is where I'm going to end the video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider leaving a like. I plan on making more content like this with GBT Neo models, AI, and tech in general. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe as well. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.